All right, today I'm going to be making a video on how to chase the northern lights in Washington State. They don't show up very often, but um, there is a way to kind of track them and get a feel for how strong the storm is going to be. And I'm going to go through my little methodology here um, of what I do to, ch to, to track them and get shots like this. First thing I do when I see a northern lights potential coming up is I will go straight to a website called windy.com. And I will check the forecast to see if there will be enough cloud clearance. And I live in Moses Lake, and we don't ever get rain here, so uh, it's usually pretty clear. But uh, you know, like tonight, if it showed up, if I saw a really strong, uh, you know, Northern Lights activity going on tonight, I would go. I'd probably head up north toward Cooley City or Grand Cooley. You know, this whole area, Spokane, Rosalia, Ritzville, that would probably be a really good area to see it. But. Um, yeah, just load up windy.com and click over here on the side. It, it'll give you an option to show the wind. It'll show wind by default, but then you can go ahead and show clouds, and it'll show you the cloud coverage. And you can just advance this as far as you want, get a feel for it. Um, now, you also use this for tracking the Milky Way as well. But there's windy.com. And once I determine you know where I'm going to chase, if the strong, storm gets strong enough, I will go to the photographer's ephemeris. Um, uh, and I'll provide all the links for this in the, in the description. And with the photographer's ephemeris, what I need, what I'm looking for is astro and. First of all, usually the moon shouldn't be in the sky, but the other night the moon was in the sky and we saw it just fine. But the storm has to be really strong in order to see it with the moon in the sky. But what this astro and is uh, astronomical twilight is what it's called and right now it's astronomical twilight for tonight. It's 10:53. If you subtract I've learned that if the storm's strong enough, you can subtract 30 minutes from that and still see it. Like, I got a test shot from the other night. It was about 10 minutes before, or about 30 minutes before astronomical twilight. And the moon was out, but the storm was strong enough to actually see some green on the horizon. So, so uh, take astronomical twilight, subtract about a half an hour, and that's when you should be able to start taking pictures of the northern lights if they are out. And... Um, so once I got that figured, then I'll just kind of start watching. I'll start, you know, I check the Aurora forecast about every day, just, you know, just out of habit. And um, there's two websites that I use to check the strength of the storm. There's Soft Serve News um, Aurora site, and it'll give you, you know, seven minutes. It'll give you a good forecast. I really like this and the, the numbers are called KP values and I don't have no idea what that means other than it's a measure of the strength of the storm. The KP1, KP1.7, and 6.7 or whatever. What that means is there's a North American KP map and see Washington kind of sits right on the, the green lines KP5, yellow lines KP7 and so right in the middle I'm kind of most likely right in the middle so if it's a KP6 what this means is if the storm is a KP6, we'll see it here, no matter what. Now, that doesn't mean a KP5 and a KP4 won't be visible. And I'll get to that here in just a second. But a KP6 is pretty much a guaranteed C. And the other night, that picture that I started with was a KP7, and we definitely saw it. It was really hopping pretty good on the, on the, on the horizon. So that is how we, that's what the KP number means. Is I, I'm not exactly sure the scientific, you know, mumbo jumbo behind it, but um just know that kp6 in this area is is the sweet spot and then down here this is the ovation map it'll give you a live overhead look of the aurora and uh, what it looked like on let's see what it, let's see what it looked like the other night was right here this is what it looked like the other night i mean that was seriously that's what a kp7 storm looks like is right there but for right now i mean daylight and you know because it's daylight everywhere, and the, you know the strength of the, the northern lights just isn't very strong. But this is this is kind of how I use this website, and I've noticed that it's a lot more reliable on reporting the KP values than the next website that I'm going to show you. Although the next website I sh I'm going to show you, it 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 will show you the the KPs, but it seems to be about a half an hour behind sometimes. Like it'll say the this other website will say like KP3, when this one's like, oh, this is definitely a KP5 or something. So I've learned to trust the soft serve news um, website for reporting the KP values. The next website I use is um, spaceweatherlive.com 
And see right now it says KP0 when soft serve says KP1.3. So it's it's not always accurate on spaceweather.com. I don't know what the difference is. But um, when I get here, I'll usually look at the KP, you know, whatever the KP is. But I've usually checked it on the Aurora Borealis site or the soft serve site beforehand. And over here it'll say current data suggests that it's not possible to see the Aurora now in middle latitudes. And on a big storm night, I mean, this is when it was KP7, and it says strong geomagnetic storm. Current data, data suggests that a slight possibility of aurora be seen. And that just means, yeah, you're going to see it. If you can get a KP7, you're going to see it. So I kind of take this with a grain of salt, you know, because I've seen it at KP3. I've seen it at KP4. And I'll tell you what, what, uh, what, what the difference is when I saw that is what I use this site for mostly is down here in the real-time solar wind measurements and and um, each of these have their own you know data to follow and everything but the one i paid most attention to is the bz and um, and if what this is, is i guess it's a measure of the, uh, the it'll tell you whether or not the plasma that's hitting the earth is positive or negatively charged and see this website automatically updates itself it just automatically updated itself Right now, um, the solar wind that's hitting the Earth, I call it plasma, but I think it's solar wind that's hitting the Earth, is positively charged. And that means if it's positively, char positively charged, it will be drawn closer to the, no the North Pole. And if it's negatively charged, it'll repel the North Pole will repel it, which will push it further down to where we can see it. So the more negative the number, like a BZ, like a minus 5 BZ, or a minus 10 BZ will give us a display. It, it'll take like a KP4 storm or a KP5. Like if there was a KP5 and a minus 10 BZ, we're going to see it. And then the other night, it was there was a KP6 going on, and there was a minus 14 BZ. And here's the here's here's the other night, the May 14th storm. And you can get you can just get. Um, there, you can go to the archive here and click on the Aurora and Solar Activity Archive. You can check past days like, and kind of learn from it. <clears throat> but down here, this was um, it's it's measured in UTC, which is Universal Time, something whatever. And see, right now it's 18:59 UTC, and it's 11:59 here. So what that means is it's eight hours ahead. Yeah, eight hours ahead. Nine hours. I can't do math right now. Yeah, eight hours ahead of us. So what um, what it was is about. See right here, it'll say. You know, it's six o'clock UTC on May fourteenth, which is ten o'clock our time. Ten o'clock our time, we had a minus fourteen BZ, which is just insanity. I mean, that's a super negatively charged solar wind cycle, and it was hanging around like I started looking at the numbers at about I don't know about nine o'clock. 8 o'clock that night and I saw that it was a minus 12 BZ I'm like oh my gosh please hold please hold please hold till later and um, and I and I kind of watched it minus 13 and then it kind of bumped up to 3 there for a second it'll kind of spike up a little bit like a heartbeat and then it'll come back down 13 minus 14 what you're looking for is an average here you're looking for a sustained negative charge and um, and this was, I mean, it was pulling down. I had some clouds, but I did a test shot, and I could really see, like, it was a KP6 to the minus 13 BZ. You are definitely seeing that. I could see that with the three-quarter moon. It was like the three-quarter moon, and it was like a half an hour before astronomical twilight, and there was still just a strong green on the horizon. Like, you were seeing you were seeing this thing no matter what. So a, mi a good minus 14 BZ um, with the KP6 that was totally visible that night. And um, there is another app that I use. It's called My Aurora Forecast um, by J. Rustin Apps. I think you can get it for both um, both Android and iOS. And what it does, it'll tell you the KP4. It'll tell you the KP right out of the gate. And then it'll give you the predictive KP and tell you the cloud coverage for the night. And it's even got the ovation map on it. But I never actually used the ovation map on it. I didn't even know that until I had that till now. But it'll tell you, you know, give you a good forecast. You know, it'll give you a lot. It'll give you all this information. Like if you scroll down on it, it'll give you the BZ and all that as well. 
And when I'm out in the field, I'm always checking it to see the strength of the storm and whatnot. Well, that's basically how I chase right there. Um, I'm just constantly, like, this page doesn't refresh itself, so I just refresh it and see. Oh, now it's going to ramp up to a 2 here in about 40 minutes. It'll give you a good 40 minutes. And what I do once I see, once I get, um, like, I never know if it's going to be visible. Like, there's all this data and everything like that, but you never know how early you're going to be able to see it. So one thing I like to do is I will go outside, just step out my front door, and I will take a test shot. And I'll just put my camera in a really super high ISO and expose, just handheld for about, you know, two seconds just to, just to get a look at it. And this was from the April 19th storm. And uh, you can kind of see the green on the horizon. As soon as I see that, I'm flying out the door. And this was about a half an hour before astronomical twilight that night. And that's just what, that's another thing I do before I leave. And when I see that, if I see that, I'm out the door. Like, I'm out the door, and I'll probably post to the site and say, hey, I'm chasing. This is where I see it, and let's go. And, um, yeah, that's basically how I chase the, basically how I chase the Northern Lights. Just got to keep an eye on the numbers. You know, when it's, when the BZ is really low, and the KP is getting up there, and it's forecasted to grow. Like, there's a forecast site as well. You can come up to uh, Aur Auroral Activity here. And where's the Aurora Forecast? And it'll kind of give you, um, predicted high, you know, predicted K, you know, K indices or whatever, which is KP. So, I mean, nothing's going on here for the next couple of days. You can, and you can kind of take this with a grain of salt once they get two or three days out, but, um, it'll kind of give you an idea of what they were expecting. Like a couple of days ago, they were expecting the KP6 and there was a K, and it turned out to be a KP1. And then on the night of the 20, on the 14th, they said it was going to be a, a KP2 when it was a KP7. So it was just like the forecast two or three days out. It's good to kind of give you an idea. You know, they can kind of measure that solar winds coming, something like that. Like, oh, there was a CME or coronal mass e or eruption or whatever I think that's what it is, where the sunspots, you know, something to do with the sunspots. And they can kind of predict that, hey, there's going to be some, there's going to be some activity maybe for the next couple of days. So you kind of, yeah, filament, like another eruption right here. Let's see, filament eruption. You had another CME. That was on the 13th. So they said they put out that latest news, and it was the next day that it got here, and we saw it. So that's what, um, you know, they can kind of, space weather news will tell you a little bit about it. But that's basically how I chase the northern lights. Um, just when when you see the numbers and you get the news, kind of just start checking. You gotta you gotta watch it because you never know what's gonna happen. Nobody can really predict when they're gonna happen. That's the biggest thing with it. Nobody can predict when they're gonna happen. So I just you know I'll put all these links here in the description, and um, you know I just got them here. Photographers ephemeris, and I've got them right there in my right at the top of my favorites. So I just kind of check them every day and see you know what's going on and. And that's, that's, that's how I, that's how I get my shots. That's how I get out and that's how I'm on time and that's how I find my spot. Oh, and another thing, um, there's another website called darksightfinder.com. And if you really struggle, if you don't know where to go to see one, here's another really good website I'll put up. All right, here's darksightfinder.com. And what Dark Sight Finder, it allows you, it'll tell you where the darkest spots in the state are. So I live right here. Here's Moses Lake, and here's Ritzville, and Odessa, and Lind. And I live right on the edge of that. So whenever I want to chase the Northern Lights, I head out into this dark spot. Because this is, I mean, this is the darkest guys in the state. There's actually some really cool barns right here in this little nook and cranny. But, you know, I can see them. You know, I take my test shots in a blue band here. What you're looking for is nothing significant nothing significantly bright to the north kind of north northeast so if you're down south of Wenatchee you know over here and you look up toward you know you're not going to see anything because Wenatchee is just going to kill it and you get over to Seattle Bellevue this area and I just eh, it's just good luck um, seeing anything out there I mean I guess you can if the storm's bright enough and there's a few spots and things like that but this is kind of what I this is what I go to to find, you know, here's the Colville Indian Reservation, things like that. It'll just kind of give you a nice overlay and give you an idea of where the highest concentration of light pollution is. Um, and that's, that's Dark Sight Finder. So that's another site that I use to find the Aurora.